Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. Siberia is a huge and often overlooked landmass when discussing the human story and although intensive excavations have taken place in the last century, it is still quite a poorly understood region in the prehistoric era. It's estimated that the earliest human occupation was sometime around 40,000 years ago, with small groups of big game hunters migrating into this region from the west, living in harsh climatic conditions and long dry winters. By around 20,000 years ago, two principal cultural traditions had emerged. The Afontova Gora, which comprises a number of archaeological sites on the banks of the Yenisei River, and also the Moltar Buret, situated on the upper Angara River in the area west of Lake Baikal. The Moltar Buret culture is named after the two principal archaeological sites, Moltar and Buret, and they do, without any doubt, bring forth some of the most incredible finds ever recovered from the Ice Age world. Moltar is probably the best understood a multi-layered archaeological site with deposits ranging from 25,000 to around 15,000 years ago. It was excavated from 1928 to 1958, which is when the bulk of the finds were discovered, and it has also been studied again in more recent times. It was described as containing a Gravettian-like lithic industry with stone and ivory objects and 15 dwelling structures dated between 21,000 and 25,000 years ago, which was the height of the last glacial maximum. Incredibly, 13,000 artefacts have been discovered, and more than 850 items are considered totally unique to this culture, and these help us to define this particular Paleolithic population. We find hundreds of ivory, bone and stone objects, including well-defined anthropomorphic figurines, numerous pendants, objects with ornamental decoration, ivory and stone bracelets, perforated discs, beads and ivory plaques, one of which is engraved with the representation of a mammoth, as well as fine nail-like pins. Personal ornamentation and mobile art were clearly important to these people, who we know hunted reindeer and mammoths. The fact there are 15 dwelling structures at this location, as well as the fact more than 13,000 artefacts have been discovered, may imply that a population had settled here permanently. But although we do see signs of a rich society, far removed from the outdated picture of traditional hunter-gatherers, it is not thought that these dwellings were permanent, even if they are well founded. This culture had advanced blade technologies with rich diversified lithic bone and antler tools. We find scrapers, pebble tools, various cores and blades. Their houses were semi-subterranean, about 50 or 70 centimetres into the earth, sometimes oval, sometimes square, and made from reindeer antler and large animal bones, likely covered with animal skins and sod to protect the people from the severe northerly winds. The houses rose above ground level, using animal bones and stone slabs arranged vertically. The ivory anthropomorphic sculptures at Moltar are incredible works of art, and according to the experts, they show several stages of human childhood from infancy to teenager, implying they did have some function and meaning. There are also adult figurines, generally female, sometimes with and sometimes without clothing and accessories. We even find a Venus figurine carved from the ivory of a mammoth, 21,000 years old and separated by thousands of miles from the Venus figurines that are found in Europe. The similarities between Ice Age European and Siberian cultures seem almost impossible because of the distance, but it's not actually unexpected because of what we know about the root of these people and the movement and spread of human populations. 
Understanding the dynamics associated with human migrations and admixtures really is a complex field of study, and there really is no good way it can be condensed into just a few paragraphs for a video. And so if I get anything wrong, and make any sweeping generalisations in the next few minutes, please do forgive me, but it has been hard work trying to make sense of the data. Studies have shown that the Upper Paleolithic or Late Stone Age populations in Siberia, all the way to Subarctic Europe, were pretty much all one culture, of course with local variation, and these people are often labelled the Aurignacians. The Ice Age culture that preceded the Gravettians in Europe, and the Multarburets in Siberia. In the paper titled, The Formation of the Aurignacians in Europe, Janusz Kozlowski of the University of Liège said the Aurignacians originated in regions just northeast of the Levant, maybe as far as the Zagros Mountains, spreading into Europe and Asia, and, in time, they migrated from Asia back to Europe and the Middle East. So, the Ice Age cultures of Europe, the Middle East and North Asia looked to have similar origins, and although they did diversify through time, clear cultural similarities can be noted, as well as cultural differences. As the population split, they all encountered their own stresses and strains, all had their own local complexities and new relationships to navigate. For example, Europeans lived alongside and interbred with Neanderthals, and Siberians lived alongside and eventually mixed with East Asian populations, and also the Denisovans. But when the Aurignacian people reached Siberia, they were genetically similar to the people of Europe and from looking at genetic studies, they show that these people did not mix with East Asian groups for quite some time. More than a decade ago, using the remains of a 24,000 year old boy from Moltar, the human genome was sequenced. He was found to be closely related to the populations of Europe, West and South Asia and Africa, but had no affinities with the East Asian populations. Cultures across the world were developing and diversifying through the Ice Age, and the Moltar site of Siberia shows that a well-defined and relatively advanced culture had emerged. They had an Aurignacian origin, but their beliefs, art, technologies and techniques had become somewhat unique and well-developed, arguably more so than comparable cultures of Europe. Maybe this is because of living conditions or maybe the climate, or maybe due to interaction with East Asian populations, or maybe even the Denisovans. At this stage we can only speculate. There are links between Siberian Ice Age cultures and the pre-pottery Neolithic site of Gebekli Tepe. Researchers traced microblade technologies of Gebekli Tepe to ones found in the Zagros Mountains, and these can be traced back to Siberia. It looks as though from around 30,000 years ago, the well-developed Eurasian Siberian population, also classified as ancient North Eurasians, began migrating out in every direction, with a specific wave migrating back to the west, through the Inner Asian Mountain Corridor. On reaching the Zagros Mountains they entered southeastern Anatolia, and here various populations, cultures and technologies collided. Southeastern Anatolia at the end of the Younger Dryas likely saw the native hunter-gatherers, the Natufians of the Levant, and Siberian Zagros people from the east converging in one place exchanging ideas, technologies, knowledge and wisdom, and the result could well be the Tastapella pre-pottery Neolithic culture. With that in mind, Ice Age Siberia is incredibly important to the human story. The finds from sites like Moltar show just how advanced and organised society was more than 20,000 years ago, and also just how artistic and innovative humans were. For many reasons, Moltar is without doubt one of the most interesting prehistoric sites in the world, and maybe, just maybe, 
This site and others like it in South Central Siberia hold the key to understanding the development of not just post Ice Age Europe and the Middle East, but also the first people of the Americas. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.